Okay. Uh, the, um, I, but I think I think that's maybe a good position to be in because you're coming at it from a very honest and when I say innocent, I don't mean that in a patronising way. But do you know what I mean? You probably have to. I, yeah, I don't. I don't want to make this into some sort of art critique. It's right. Okay. Come so on. you're a dude that's <clears throat> been down in the London scene for some time. You need to tell, you need to remind me how long you've been down there, and then or, or wherever you've been. You've, but you've not been in Preston. Let's put it that way. So obviously, it's a relatively new move. And how is it influencing your output in your art? And you you. The direction of it are you is that is it changing having the confidence in making that decision quite a big kind of life-changing decision and kind of moving away from somewhere like london and not knowing what was going to be here moving back to preston i was actually i never ever it was never in my plan to move back to preston or anywhere around this area it just never figured at all because for me if i move somewhere it's kind of a move forward and a, and a move on and that's that's what happened when I moved to Birmingham to Brighton to London moved abroad for nearly a year um so coming back to Preston never figured so it's it's been a healthy kind of leap of faith that's actually helped me kind of have a bit of breathing space with my artwork and kind of figure out what I want to do where I want to take it <clears throat> and the confidence in the work and the direction of it has changed quite dramatically in the past two, three years, I think, as a, as a result of all that. And having that time, that concentration and um, having a bit of a step back. And, and like we're all having a bit of a step back right now in this mm. lockdown moment yeah. and we're all kind of having that chance to kind of take stock mm. and breathe. Um, that's kind of what I was doing sort of three, four years ago when I was starting to move back up here. Okay, that's interesting. I, I'll let's, yeah, let's come to the um, pandemic thing in a bit because obviously everybody I've spoke to is, is what this is about and we're in that moment now. But I'm just interested to see because obviously, like I say, we, we've recently met and I know, I know a, a, a little bit about your work, but I've been just doing a bit of digging around and looking at your Instagram <laughs> feed. And when I go on people's Instagram feed, I always scroll and scroll and scroll right to the beginning to see where they were at. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure whether the, the stuff on your feed is your work or whatever it is, but it's quite political in parts and quite, um, quite, uh, is it angry or is it, uh, uh, as you were, really? well, maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. There's a little is bit, this, it's quite an arctic. This, it's an arctic. Is this from the from the early Instagram stuff, the photographic stuff, kind of um, yeah, lots of walls was, and surfaces? Yeah, I'm just trying to find out. Really, I was trying to find out a bit about your yeah, so your past. Okay. Was it street art? I mean, you tell me about because you. I see you as a you're coming from the, the street a little bit. I mean, am I right on that? Or am I wrong? Well, it, it, this is an interesting conversation that's going to go in two different two <laughs> different areas. I had <laughs> I had this conversation the other day with a, um, a great contact um, in Manchester that's kind of um, becoming quite a good uh, friend as well. And um, he's a big advocate of my work and he loves the style and has kind of followed it for the past couple of years since I've been doing um, Manchester Art Fair and different things like that. And we we were talking about the work and kind of describing its context where it comes from where where do i come from what what is the work what's it about and what you've just picked up on with the instagram feed and where that started back in 2013 i was actually in sydney australia living there for two months and then living in toronto for nearly 10 months so i had almost this this kind of um, like a, a sabbatical just completely out and away from life I gave up my job in um, London at the time and just took off um, for, for a number of different reasons and the, the time that I spent away I literally just did nothing but wander the streets with my camera or my iPhone and just kind of soaked up a lot of urban kind of imagery kind of marks wall surfaces abstracted little elements of whatever I was kind of walking through 
and it's something that's always it's always been there it's always interested me um there's a there's a i always remember a, a trip back in the 90s in the very early 90s to new york and picking up a book on um graffiti and wall art at that time called um uh, beyond graffiti soho walls um and that kind of informed something in me when I was doing my fine art studies. And it just stuck. Every time I travelled, I picked up a camera and just recorded different elements of whatever I saw around the streets or wherever. Um, and it stuck. So those early days of the Instagram feed are part of that. That's literally recording that year away. And when I kind of came back, I carried on with it a little bit more and then all of a sudden in 2016, 2017, that's when the artwork kind of exploded again. And that's, that's how it's kind of now kind of honed in and fine tuned into more specifically to do with the painting. So that, so that street observation then that you, you did has obviously massively influenced what, what you're about as, a, as an artist. It, yeah um it always has it's always it's always been there with um abstract has been a big passion of mine since um since day dot more so since graduating when i was doing my fine art degree i was it, the, the work was very figurative it was interiors it was portraits that kind of thing when i got the chance to leave and i got us a studio in the custard factory in birmingham when it first opened um, my partner at the time and my father both encouraged me to get a studio so when i did that it just everything fell forward and that's when i started down the the kind of the abstract path and um started exploring that i mean i, I think you seem very um prolific that's the right word <laughs> you see a lot of, I mean, there again, not, you know, I've not been to the studio yet. That was the, that was the plan. But I think that, um, yeah. you, know, you seem to be like, since I've met you, you seem to be, do you seem to be home in this thing and you, you seem to be on this journey. And I think that it's, it's interesting, actually, just going back to what you were saying also about, um, about coming back to Preston, you know, you know, how, People often say this when they go travelling, they never want to come back because they always feel like it's a backward step when people have moved away. I don't quite get that myself because I've never, I've always lived here, I've never gone away. I've, I've obviously I, travelled. I used to think that. Well, that's, yeah, yeah. So, what do you, so what, how does it, obviously, that, that mm. kind of urban vibe that you've got in your work, I mean, obviously, Preston's not, you know, we're, we're, I know we're a city, but we're a small city and we're a bit more. Yeah. As cities goes, we're probably more connected really than anything to, to, to how, how is you, can, can you see it now are you are moving away from that? Are you, are you focusing, is there another purpose behind it now? Um, I, it will still, it will still focus on that. That, that, that element of my work is quite a strong stylistic narrative and that I think that will remain. I'd like that to remain. I was nervous about what was here or what wasn't here in terms of creativity. So finding your, yourselves and the artistry house um, and, and people like Graham Wendell, you know, the Atlantic contemporary, seeing what the Harris is doing as well. The Harris seems to be up in its game and kind of doing more and more kind of adventurous stuff. There's, um, there's different art groups within Preston and within Blackpool. So, I've been pleasantly surprised and actually seen the development of Preston, which has been badly needed for so many years. Mm. It's really good and really healthy to see the place starting to kind of come up again. Mm. And as part of that, that's kind of, I think that's really put me in a healthy space with the artwork and given me the impetus to kind of reintroduce myself back to the area. Up here. And... Preston in particular, I think you've got to work a lot harder, a damn sight harder. Do you think, do you think that yeah. is the same you feel about your work? And do you, do you feel you've got to work a lot harder to actually, and is it helping you craft where you want to be going, do you think? After many years of, of, of painting and doing kind of abstract based work, I'm used to various different comments, whether they're positive or negative. So there's part of me that was coming back to Preston 
kind of preparing for some of the more kind of negative kind of aspects or the lack of open-mindedness about it. But I suppose there is a bit of a push to do with that. I, I don't, uh, abstract art isn't something I generally warm towards. Yeah. So I'm probably one of the Luddites from Preston. Oh, the bloody hell's that rubbish! <laughs> no, I didn't Burn it. No, but... <laughs> <laughs> No, I didn't do that. But, but it, I think there again, maybe because I'm not particularly, um, I'm not, um, well, I'm not educated for one on, on anything. But I think, Whatever, I, think, I don't believe that for a I minute. I'm, a, I'm quite a traditionalist on, on, on certain things, but I do, the, I, I, and I'm not just saying this, and I, and I, I don't know where there again, so I've got to know you, but I, I do see something in your work that I never thought I'd, I, I would. Now, what's your, what is your expression? Or is everything, is there, is there a, a hidden meaning? You've got it all defensive. I'm, I'm going to unfold, I'm going to unfold. What, um, what, what's the narrative? Is there a narrative? If there is any form of narrative within the work, I would say it's a stylistic narrative. One of the things that... I don't want to do with my work, and I've always felt this for, for many years, I don't want to put a lot of philosophical diatribe on my work and make it, I want to kind of remove that pretentious kind of element to it. The work is what it is, it's what I do, it's what I'm passionate about, and it comes from many different places, and there's lots of different influences that have kind of culminated in this this current style that I've been developing for many years and it's a very simple one it's my own exploration of mark making one of the things that I love doing is starting a piece of work <clears throat> and having a basic idea of, of, of knowing where it's going to go what I'm trying to achieve compositionally, visually, but you can never fully predict what the finished piece will look like. It could, it could go down a completely different path. One of the things that I try to achieve with all of my work is for it to look as spontaneous as possible. I mean, this is the thing, what's, what I've learned from observing your work, obviously when I, sometimes you look at, abstract because it because it is abstract and you can't your brain can't connect it with something so you're trying to read into it maybe or second guess it but i think with with your you know you've obviously got your own style and distinct style so you you've, you've yeah you've actually craft you've actually crafted being spontaneous and and free. it's, it's you know what I mean? it you've, you've worked in it i can tell it's not it's not something's gone <laughs> boof, boof, <laughs> style. you know you you might do that, but what I mean is you have the best time crafting your style. There's, there's, it's like a there's, there isn't it? You know, there's, a, there's a couple of different elements to it. The, the, um, there are uh, a number of bodies of work that I've done, which, when you look at them, they could go from being quite minimal or to very frenetic, very busy kind of compositions. The, the busier kind of pieces of work and probably the bigger pieces of work to get to that point probably take about four or five different stages. Which when you think about it and you kind of break that down, it's actually not that spontaneous, but it's part of the process to get there to create that finished kind of painting, that finished kind of image. As you may have noticed by the Instagram page at the moment, there's a series of works that I've put up as part of the artist support pledge. Yeah. And making some pieces of work available at a, a good price for, for, for anybody and everybody to kind of purchase a piece of work. And the actual support pledge has been this, this wonderful campaign set up by this um, uh, guy, Matthew Burroughs studio. <clears throat> and it's basically making artwork available right now to, to anybody and everybody, but it's also allowing a bit of income to be brought in to us that could be struggling with kind of finances right now. 
And part of that, I've kind of put some work forward, which I was working on in a digital capacity on my iPad back in January, February. Now, again, there's two elements to the work. The, some of those are kind of quite heavy kind of compositions and kind of digital collages, which I've then worked over. Or they're very minimal um, kind of markings. So there's, there's, there's two elements kind of running together there. And the more minimal kind of markings and the more kind of minimal compositions, I, <clears throat> it's, a, it's a, a, another area that I'm kind of currently exploring in, in all the work. And it's quite a, it's actually quite therapeutic. Well, it's, good. it's funny actually, because I'm glad you brought that up, because I actually <coughs> wanted to ask you about that. Because look, obviously with me, me doing my little bit of research, <laughs> I noticed that you've gone quite minimal, very, you know, simple, simple strokes and yeah. simple lines. I mean, is that, I mean, just going back to the, the artist the, uh, pledge thing with the, the pandemic, let's just pick up on that a little bit, because I know we talked about that earlier. Yeah. Is, is that work, has that work come out of this pandemic, or is it something you've worked on before? For anybody out there that doesn't really know me or know me as a, <clears throat> as a person or my kind of background, I do a bit of freelance work within events. So I kind of do a bit of health and safety and floor management. So when I'm away, I'm trying to kind of keep up and keep up the creativity and kind of do, do that and kind of keep myself, keep the head running. So when I'm walking around a, a venue and a hall floor, I'll be kind of, <laughs> kind of get people taking the piss out of me somewhat for doing this. But I'll be taking photographs of the hall floor. So there's all the hall markings, there's all the kind of scrapes and yeah, yeah. Um, all sorts. And I kind of just stop still and people will be like, what, what, what are you doing? I'll be like, oh, I'm just taking a picture of the floor. And then I get a group of people stood around me going, <laughs> what's on the floor? What, what, what are you seeing that we aren't? And I'm kind of looking at it going, wow, that's a piece of work, that is. Yeah. <laughs> And that's some of those some of those pieces actually came out in the compositions that are now as part of the artist support pledge. It's almost like you're observing human markings and then doing your own versions of it. Yeah, is that, I, I, is, that, is that what you do? Is that it? Is that is that does that sum up? Are you such? Are you? Are they just inspiration, or, or is it what? What what is that? You know, you obviously. You're fascinated by the, the, the art <coughs> humans leave and then you're leaving your one mark on canvas. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I mean, it's like going back to the taking a photograph of the whole floor in a, in a, in a say, in a exhibition venue. You're on it. You, you're stood on a dirty hall floor. Yeah. So there's, there's, there's chalk markings of where a, a building point should be or there's scrapes in the concrete there's splashes of paint it's normally it's normally kind of paint splashes that have been dragged across the floor mm. that i kind of turn around look down and go god that's really beautiful i love that i love it why um I, <laughs> why i don't know I, I, I just love them i just i just love those kind of abstracted marks yeah yeah and um, the, the, there was those pieces that are up um, at the moment. I did another sketchbook running alongside that, and um, it was 50 pages, and it was only a little kind of um, A5 sketchbook. And I just used a fiber tip, black fiber tip pen, and literally just kind of scrawled through the whole thing, but very, very. Um, few marks per per image and I literally just kind of let my hand kind of and the pen just fall across the paper and there's some of the most beautiful little kind of compositions um, and there's something about that just kind of that freedom of just kind of letting go and just seeing where 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 things kind of go by accident, with, without too much intention, yeah. um, and again, that is part of the work. That is part of the paintings. It's part of everything that I do. Is is trying to create. I know sometimes what I'm doing. I know what I'm trying to create, but I'm trying not 
to purposefully contrive something. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's got to feel natural. I mean, I think that's the... I mean, you're talking about your technique, aren't you? I mean, this is something that I've sort of spoke about with the other artists. It's sort of... Um, how much do you battle with technique and expression? You know, I think you can spend a lifetime trying to learn something, can't you? And never actually be an artist, rather than just, yeah. you know, or just get on with it and be an artist and evolve and develop as you go. You know, what's your opinion on that? You know, I love that last bit that you just said about maybe just get on with it and just battle through and find what you can, find what you can learn at the time and keep keep adding on that as you go along. Um, <clears throat> That's something you've always done. I mean, you know, when was the, you know, when was the point you thought, right, I want to be a, a professional artist? Because it's not an easy gig. And so at, at what point did you think, right, this is what I'm doing? You know, have you always thought like that? Or? Yeah, um, I mean, I graduated in, 90, in 93 um, from Coventry. I did a, a fine art degree there. And then, as I said, I got a studio at um, what was the old Bird's Custard Factory and became this arts and media centre in 93. And I did that. For, I had that studio there for a number of years, uh, probably about five years, something like that, four or five years. And just kind of tried to go at it full time. But at the time, it was, it was quite difficult. It was quite financially, it wasn't a big money maker. And um, it was a bit of a challenge doing that in Birmingham. Um, but I kept on with it. But I ended up, and this is where it kind of links back into my freelance work, that I ended up getting a job being recommended in events. And... I just all of a sudden just kind of got pulled into that and I was in and out of that for about nearly 19 years, 20 years. Um, but at the same time, I was still doing the artwork and still kind of pushing forward with that and doing exhibitions in group exhibitions, solo exhibitions in Birmingham and then doing that in Brighton, um, then picking the work back up when I was on my travels um, abroad. Um, and setting stuff up there and so it's, it's, it's never gone it's never left I've always kind of been pushing forward with it I think going back to when you were asking about why Preston why being back here losing my dad I think was probably quite a wake-up moment for me to and quite an impetus to, to kind of you know you've only got one life <clears throat> and with both parents now gone, um, it, it does kind of make you sit up and think, and it makes you appreciate stuff and kind of think, you know, time ticks on, life goes very fast, you need to make the most of, of what you have and, and get on with it. And that was part of the impetus as well behind um, a lot of the artwork as well. I think that really pushed my hunger and my passion for it even more so than before. So that's where kind of it kind of comes back around full circle to where I am kind of now. Yeah, I mean, you, like I said before, you see very prolific and very <clears throat> and focused on your art now. And I think I can say, I mean, like I said, I don't know, I don't know prior to this, you know, how prolific and how much work you were doing, but it seems to be now you're on this path to, you know, fully accredited artist, you know, <laughs> get out there and, <laughs> no, but you are you sort of you know you that, you don't you don't come across to me. It's, if I I when I first met you, I wouldn't have known you had a a a, 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 a freelance job. I just assumed you were an artist doing what you did and make make a living out of it. So you know, um, and I know you do, but you you seem more even more focused now and driven on that. I've I've been very lucky that I've been able to kind of. Um kind of do both i never i don't think the platform was was really fully there for me to be able to realize everything that i want to do with the artwork over the past few years so it's only really since i've moved back to preston that more opportunities have come forward and i've been able to explore it more and the contacts that I've made through doing some of the art fairs, the art events, um, 
kind of around the country and, and also the Manchester Art Fair, which has been quite a key one. And the contacts from there, they've really helped kind of galvanize what I'm doing. And it's been good to, to have the work and the efforts that I'm making noticed. And that has kind of helped kind of push the direction of the work to the place that I want to get to. Where's your next step in, where, where, you know, where's your work heading to now? So, um, definitely, de the work is definitely heading to, um, I would say a more, even more expressive kind of place. Um, but also on a sense of scale, it's gonna be, I'm, I'm wanting to go much bigger and expand on the materials that I'm using uh, just throw some kind of slightly more random elements into there. Um, I'm, at a, I'm, at, I'm at an, an interesting kind of point where the work's either kind of going to go very minimal or it's going to go very frenetic, incredibly busy. So there's two things that I'm kind of looking at at the moment, but um, the key thing is kind of building up and uh, keeping on with the connections that I've made since kind of moving up here and just kind of keeping that dialogue going to, to get the work properly represented, shown and getting it out there. Um, um, but I think, I think that it's, it's also as well, it's getting, it's getting to people that, it's getting to the audience that appreciate the work. And, that, and that's the thing, that, and that's what's, I think, there again, going back to our location sometimes, we've got to get people looking further afield, looking more to the north of Lancashire. And yeah, yeah, absolutely. To discover works that, that are maybe a little bit off the beaten track or, you know, people, people forging a different path. And I think... Getting, that, the, getting know, them to look at something a bit different as well. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, you know, and I think... Um, but it is, it's, a, it's such a difficult subject of where you price, how you price, and how you sell. Very complicated. You mentioned other artists that you look at. I mean, who are your influencers? Where's, what's your, what is your, I mean, I mean the world of art's vast, isn't it? You know, who, who it, do you look up to and admire? Um, it is, I, I would say, uh, that there's, there's about three, um, big key contemporary artists that have greatly influenced um, my work and kind of given me that drive to, to do what I do. There's um, Howard Hodgkin, um, absolutely adore his work. I, I love what he, what he achieved. And even with age, the, the older he got, the more bold the work seemed to get. Um, and that was kind of quite a key thing in kind of kind of pushing my style forward. Um, Christopher Wool, uh, brilliant, brilliant kind of um, abstract artist, and uh, just a really interesting compositional kind of maker of of kind of various different marks. Just beautiful, beautiful pieces. And um, Sides Fombly. Uh, and for me, he's probably the pinnacle of the contemporary kind of kind of old school kind of abstract painters that I just think his work's phenomenal. And it's it's he's probably one of those figures that most people will kind of could potentially look at and just go, what the hell is that? <laughs> A four-year-old could do that. But his work is just phenomenally beautiful, delicate, and bold, and incredibly poetic. If you ever get a chance to read up on his work and his history. I will, yeah, um, absolutely. It, it, um, he, he put a lot of history and poetry into his work. It was it's just phenomenal. So those those guys were really um really have influenced uh, quite a lot and then there's there's current um artists a lot of stuff which i'm discovering on instagram as well um sam korsinski korsinski i think it is sammy korinsky 
I'm going to have to relook that one up. I'm going to know that I've I've kind of badly pronounced that one. Um, and uh, a painter from Berlin called Jenny Brasinski. Just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful abstract work. Mm. But there's so many out there. There's so many more that I could kind of name check. Um, how does how does the the social world? What does it do to you? I mean, sometimes I, it's funny because I just sort of set my own uh, art Instagram up. Uh, I've never had one before. I've never put my work on there. Okay. And um, and the reason being is that because I follow a lot of artists, and I because I get a bit dejected sometimes that I'm actually pretty shit. I'm not good enough, you know. Does it? How does it affect you? Oh, <laughs> does, it inspire, does it inspire you or deject you? I, I don't know. The the internet is a great thing for pushing stuff out, and it's also a great thing for discovering new kind of work and new influences. And it's great for kind of dialogue and kind of interacting with other artists but it's also a bit of a, a, a dangerous kind of loop um i had a walk around the country lane this morning and i had a little bit of time to kind of reflect and kind of think about a few bits and i was this is one of the the things that came up that we can be a danger to ourselves on social media that we probably place too much importance on certain elements of it that we push our work out up there and then you get a like and it's like oh brilliant somebody's somebody's noticed the work and then you'll get another one and, and it just kind of buoys you up and it's it's a feel-good factor it's good it's kind of a little bit addictive but at the same time it can also be a bit detrimental because you you kind of step back and think hold on am i doing the work for the likes or am i doing the work for me and um, you, I think you've just got to approach it with a very, you've got to be quite open-minded about it and just maybe not take it too seriously. Well, I think it goes back uh, to what we were talking about before with such as sales and pricing and everything. That's all part of, then you, know, you need people to discover you and find your work and find out what you're about and do the whole yeah. work and buy into you. And you hope, you hope, really, it's not just having fans, is it, and followers. It's hopefully they'll, it'll potentially turn to people buying your work. Exactly, that's exactly. What we, that's what we've got to hope. I mean, yeah. That, for me, is what you know, um, it should be there for. And I, I, it's whether it does that or not, I'm not sure. Um, it's, but, it's, but it's, it's one of many things, isn't it, of, of how you get out there and promote yourself. Um, find things that kind of give you the impetus and the belief in your own work as well to kind of keep keep pushing it forward you know well, in your obviously i've not got a chance to get to your studio yet because i want to each artist i want to i'm talking to i want to do a little proper film not a bloody zoom thing yeah um so what, what are the what other things do influence you in your work can you when you're in your studio what what what's the there is another key element that kind of kind of kicks in um, in the studio, and it's one that kind of helps me kind of focus and kind of lose myself into the work a little bit more. And that's kind of music, and that's that's always been quite a that's been quite a key thing over the years, and more so within again the past sort of three or four years, where I've kind of rediscovered my own kind of tastes again in music and kind of kind of challenged what I'm listening to and that's um, kind of gone back to a lot more electronica kind of stuff and as a as a as a particular style of music it's it, it's brilliant to have on in the background in the studio and that kind of really does I don't know not create a, a trance state of work but it it just helps me kind of relax and just kind of pick up a momentum and um, kind of just, just pull the passion out in doing the work. And that's been quite, it's quite an enjoyable thing. It, it just really kind of helps you kind of get in the moment and kind of lose yourself a little bit. And who, what, who's enlightened me? You know, I'm, the, I'm an old couple, <laughs> look at me. <laughs> well, um, I've, got, I've got a bit more of a classic taste nowadays. But what, Go on, give me a give me a give me a name. One of my favourite albums of the past two two years has been by a guy called Daniel Avery, kind of John Hopkins, Nine Inch Nails. 
Oliver, um, Arnold's, uh, Niels from um, LCD Sound System, Shit Robot, Paddy Mullakai, I think it is. Stuff like that, kind of, you know, oh, and Tom York. The world's a strange place, but you know, you look at it, you know, and I think, you know, creativity is a great way of es escaping the, the reality sometimes, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know, the, the, the clarity on what I do, why I do it, is getting stronger as time goes on, and also the way to, to, to kind of put that forward and describe it and put it out there to people, it is, it is, it is getting easier. And that's, like, like I just said, you know, having these conversations with yourself and other people as well, it's a good exercise. Great, well I hope it's been good, I hope it's been useful. As it's going darker, and this light's getting brighter in my face here, so oh, it's brilliant. <laughs> okay, that's really great. Um, lovely. Good, well, thanks very much. Good to talk. Good to talk. Take it easy. Cheers, Andy. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. See you later.